Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about decluttering for a more positive mindset. Are you challenged with having a positive mindset? Do you wonder how being more positive on social media could support you in clearing clutter? Wondering how someone making you angry can help you clear your clutter? Let's wrap up our month focusing on clearing clutter with Julie Caraccio podcast interviews. Ready to clear your clutter and share your gifts with the world? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join award-winning professional organizer, author, and certified life coach Julie Caraccio on clearing the clutter inside and out as she teaches you how to navigate the waters to declutter your life. Julie Caraccio destroys the box and examines clutter in all areas, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic, relationships, health, finances, and more. Stranger in a Southern Land highlighted interesting and creative individuals from and in the Southeast. It's no longer active, but Jake has 100 episodes archived. I'd encourage you to check it out, especially if you live in the Southeast. Jake Feuerbach hosted the show. He now has a new podcast, How Did This Get Booked? And I encourage you to check it out. I re-listened to the interview so I can sum it up, get you your take actions, and I'd forgotten how much I love this interview with Jake. I was surprised because Jake lived in Charlotte, but he came to the house. I remember, okay, is this legit? Because I'd never had someone come and interview me at the home and said to my husband, okay, this guy's coming over because he was at work. Just check in with me in an hour. And bless his heart, my, my husband definitely did that. What I love about Jake was his openness, his curiosity, his willingness to improve himself, and his desire to better his life and himself. So I encourage you, check out the podcast. It was really wonderful that he does, and he's just such an engaging individual. And if you watch the video, you can see Antonio and quite a bit of his butt. Don't forget your take actions are at the end of the interview. Enjoy. Hey there, folks. Welcome to the edition of Stranger in a Southern Land. I, of course, am your host, Jake Manning. Today on the program, I speak with Julie Caraccio of ReawakenYourBrilliance.com. She is a life coach. She is an author and a fellow podcaster. And, you know, I've been doing this podcast for almost 80 episodes by now. And I've had a lot of really great conversations. And I've always come up at the top and said I really enjoy these conversations. But... This conversation just flew right by because it was just so good. Like far more than probably any other podcast I've done. Like we did a full hour and it felt like 15 minutes after we got done. Like it was just such an amazing conversation. Um, I had a lot of problems coming <laughs> into this podcast and I was I feel better. I don't know if you guys will feel better after this podcast, but I felt better out of this conversation and hopefully Julie felt the same. Like we really got in depth about, you know, just having a better life, you know, living a better life and, and doing better habits, positive things in your life and pushing forward to the goals and the happiness that we all want to achieve as, as people. And it's very interesting to see how some of the lessons I learned in improv and some of the hard lessons that I learned in professional wrestling, how it kind of syncs up to some of the things that Julie herself teaches her clients and the things that she talks about in her podcast. So very back and forth conversation, very interesting conversation. I learned a lot about myself and, and about like just how to be a better man, you know, and just Julie was very open, very honest, very personal. Like this is a very good podcast. I am very, very, very happy to present it to you guys today. As always, I add stuff last minute. I get improv shows. I get interesting projects come up. And also, too, if you want to know more about what's going on in September, I tweet pretty far in advance, and I Facebook in advance, and I Instagram in advance. So uh, make sure you log on to my social media to kind of be in the loop of everything that's going on. And it's very easy to do. I'm very active on Twitter, at Manscout Manning, and on Instagram, at Manscout Manning. Got through that intro, and I gotta say, it kind of confidently and pushed right through it very positively. I think just talking to Julie kind of changed my whole perception and how I attack these intros. So thank you, Julie. And uh, hopefully after you guys listen to this podcast, you'll be living your life a little bit better. But anyways, I'm very excited to bring to you Julie Caraccio here today on Stranger in the Southern Land.
but no, like I do big flower intro, so we're just gonna have a conversation. But okay. uh, what I always do is, is, is like, you know, I always say like I'm sitting here with uh, Julie Caraccio. See, that's my little trick is I make sure you say it so that way I, when I do the intro, I can just feed it back to myself. Okay. Because you said it correctly. I've got it on tape now. <laughs> We're good to go. Okay. So at least somebody on this podcast has said it correctly. So one other question. Do you want me to just talk to the camera? No, talk, talk to me. To you? Okay, talking, we're, we're, we're having a conversation gotcha. right now. Okay. We're having a conversation. I'm figuring more about you okay. and, and everything that you do. And I'm, I'm intrigued by this. Okay. Everything you do. So I want to get to the bottom of it. Okay, got it. Perfect. So, but but I, I must apologize right away. I had a very uh, stressful day yesterday and had a heated argument with my boss. So I'm coming in with all kinds of baggage right now. That's so, right. We'll get rid of your clutter. That's what we'll do. That's that's why. I, uh, so we're gonna. So basically, this podcast may be a big long infomercial of you fixing my life. So I'm very sorry. I'm coming in with all these issues. Oh, don't apologize. <laughs> it's, uh, again, everything, however it's meant to happen, happens. Okay. Well, that, that's an that's a, that's a you know an attitude that my girlfriend keeps telling me about. But that's obviously an attitude that's that's within you and the things that you do. Mm-hmm. Um, where does that come from in your life? I feel that you cannot separate the personal from the professional. So no matter what you're doing in your life, if you are a small business owner, if you are a janitor, if you're a teacher, who the person you are is going to be reflected in your professional life. We have so much stress these days. I don't want to add to it. There are certain things out of my control. I can't control the outcome of the presidential election. I, I wish I could, but I can't. But I can control whether or not I get angry. I can control whether or not I choose to get upset, and I can control whether I want to find peace of mind, if I want to choose joy, I want to choose happiness. So I focus on what I can control in my life. And there are certain things I can't. So if I can't control it, it is what it is. That was, is that a lesson you, you learned through life, or was that something ingrained in you through youth? Oh, most definitely not youth. I would say... <laughs> I think if I could change one thing in our country, it would be how we raise our children and how we educate our children because we don't teach them things like mindfulness practice or how to be a good person. We teach them math skills that they may or may not use in life. And so for me, it's been really, I would say, the past, I'm thinking I've been married now, it would be three years, I really started intense personal development about five years ago. And I'd always been interested and did really different things, but I feel like I'm finally waking up. Okay. Well, when you say personal development, what do you what do you mean by that? So for me, that's about being a better woman. That's about becoming aware, becoming conscious, and making myself a better person. I can look back and say, I, "Oh, I wasn't aware. I was being a victim in that moment." So now that I'm aware, how can I say, "Okay, in the future, recognize immediately I'm a victim," and even better, not even slipping into that. Oh, it is what it is. Here's what I can control. So being more aware and putting that into practice, because I can read about everything. I love to read, but I'm a little more challenged when it comes to doing. And so I work with a coach each month to support me in that. I think that that's a really valuable tool to have someone who has a different perspective, an outside perspective, and can see things that I'm not able to. Okay. Well, let's take a, a little step back to, to before you've, you've come to all these things uh, in, in yourself. And this is something that I'm going through right now. So that's why I was very intrigued to sit down with you because I have been trying to take self analysis of myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell a little bit of my story. Maybe we'll give a little context when we get to the point of you is that probably roughly about two or three years ago, I come to the conclusion that my wrestling career did not turn out the way I wanted to. You know, you make mm-hmm. those high goals of being main mm-hmm. event at WrestleMania, and it doesn't turn out that way. Uh, very mm-hmm. unhappy in my job. Didn't mm-hmm. uh, felt like it was leading me anywhere. I went through working for their how long and not seeing a raise or a promotion, mm-hmm. except for once during the entire mm-hmm. time that I'm there, but also feeling very underappreciated. Uh, feeling very underappreciated in my field. Um, probably, i probably say that very much maybe an alcoholic in a sense, Mm -hmm. dependent upon a chemical and Mm -hmm. stuff like that to make me happy. And then sometimes that's the only thing that was driving me in life was when's the next time I'm going to pick up a drink. Right. Now, I hit that point and it was probably as low as I could possibly be for about eight months. And then Mm -hmm. I had to pull myself out of it. And now doing podcasts and doing other things and starting, you know, my comedy career, uh, podcasts Mm -hmm. and all the other things and trying to have a positive mindset is now where I find myself. And it is a struggle every day. Absolutely it is. That was my rock bottom, Mm -hmm. I would say. Was yours 
what were the things in the li- things in your life, if you don't mind sharing, sure. that, that led you to maybe your rock bottom or your realization that I want better for myself? For me, it would have been, so I've been in, gosh, it's been 10 years in North Carolina, and I lived in Los Angeles for 10 years. And so for me, a rock bottom was I was date raped. And one of the things that I really struggled with in the aftermath now, that was the time, for instance, you have had to get tested for AIDS. Well, it wasn't, I don't know what it is now, but maybe you find out in 24 hours. Back then, it was six months Mm -hmm. test result. So I was on high alert dealing with this trauma of being raped, of um, do I have AIDS? Am I going to possibly die? And at that point in my life, I was worry, 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 worry. My mind did not have an off button. And so I did that 24 seven. And so for me, then I lost a lot of weight and, you know, I lived in LA and I'm like, I'm too thin. And if you're living in LA saying you're too thin, say, like, that's, that's, I mean, that's a problem. That's a problem. And, but I knew it wasn't healthy. And so that really was, I would say the rock bottom for me. And then I had tried to report it to the police and I got the worst person person on the phone who was like oh you're gonna have to come down in person you're gonna have to testify in front of court and I'd done rape crisis counseling in college so you know my intellect's going that's the wrong thing to say and I know that that's not right but anyway so it was just one thing after another well what is the right way to handle it like like in in your experience of dealing with the system uh, of going through through such a traumatic event what is the right way to handle it well you mean for me or how the police officer should have handled it uh, let's, let's start with Bo. Uh, let's start with your, uh, the police officer in there. Okay. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on that just because I think it's more, I would rather talk about the personal okay. development for someone okay. listening. Well, the officer should have been like, let's get you down here. Why would you even bring up a court case? Because you don't even know if I'm going to press charges. That's way in the future. In the present moment is our point of power to change. I, I don't know what's going to happen six months down the road or a month. And so they just weren't supportive. So I felt they didn't believe my story. Okay, let's get you down here. Is there a friend that can bring you down? You know, would have been just to have listened and have been gentle and kind. And they didn't do that. But what I have come to learn, and this is really hard for a lot of people, you create your reality. And I probably really got it about two or three years ago, and it's made a huge difference in my life. So I attracted that situation. Now, I believe a lot of our issues come from we don't feel we're good enough, we don't feel we're worthy, and we don't feel loved. Whatever's going on, I think you can really, that that's the core of it. And, it, and we all experience it. And so I didn't feel I was worthy, I didn't feel I was good enough. And so I look back, I like to journal. I think journaling is a great tool. And I found in the journal, oh, there's something about him that's off. And so my intuition was trying to warn me and saying, this guy, stay away from this man, and I didn't listen. And so I, have, I can be in victim mode. You know, I, I think that a lot of people, and I'm not, not minimizing anyone's pain or experience. I want to be very clear on that. Mm-hmm. But you can make a choice. Do I stay in victim mode? Because this rape happened, let's see, 10, 15 years ago. Do I want to stay in victim mode, or do I want to move forward in my life? Oh, life happens to me. I'm always going to be a victim. No, I'm choosing not to be a victim. Okay, well, what can I learn from this? What is the gold nugget? I always try to learn in a stressful situation, what can I take away? Well, I learned I have to trust my intuition. It's there for a reason. I learned, okay, what do I need to change about my life? I'm not happy. Nothing's working. What do I need to do to move forward? And so I ended up joining, uh, going to school. It was called the Clear Sight Clairvoyant School Program. And this is having energy healing and it's about clearing the muck clearing the clutter and being able to look within and say okay what am I creating what am I doing how do I need to change my life and so for me that was kind of rock bottom and that going to that program which was 13 months was truly the beginning of my spiritual journey and I've just have kept it up and that was and then I left LA probably about a year after that but that was was the start of it okay now, when you're in, in, in this program, and, and I, I think the thing that was similar to me that, that came around in my life was probably improv in the, in the sense of, of working with people because mm-hmm. it was always I push people away. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not exactly sure where that comes from, to be really quite honest. That's probably but the, that doesn't matter. I think yeah. we get focused on the story because if I focus on the story, well, let's spend the time finding out where that comes from. Why don't we take that energy we're spending there and be in the present moment and make that change and be like, okay, now I'm aware that I push people away. 
So if I'm in an intimate relationship and I feel myself, let's my, here's my awareness. Oh, I'm starting to push her away. I really like her. I'm starting to push her away. Okay, let me express that. Or do I need to journal? Or do I need to go for a walk? How can I change my behavior? Because I have a choice. You know, a lot of times people say, oh, I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice in this election. Both candidates suck. You do have a choice. So we, we tend to forget that. And I think that that's a really important lesson to learn. And I apologize if no, I no, cut no, you no, off. No, 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 no. But I'm very passionate about that. And no, no, I, I, that I, I want to understand that because that's the thing. Like for me, I'm maybe because I'm a plot driven person when it comes mm-hmm. when I write stories. It's like, where does, where does that particular come from? Like, like I feel like there's a sense well, the of motivation. You yeah. need to understand your character. Yeah. Yes. Like why, why do I push people away? Why is mm-hmm. it situation? Like, why do I always feel happier by myself? Like when I'm alone by myself, I feel like I'm the happiest, but yet I still look for adulation, uh, gratification from, from other people. So it's, it's a weird dichotomy that I push people away, but yet what I'm looking for, it comes from people. But, well, oh, I don't think that's weird at all because that to me goes back to that self-love. I need adulation from others. Give yourself that love, that adulation. Whatever you seek in others, you can provide for yourself. Mm-hmm. I really believe that. I mean, I'm working a lot on self-love right now. And I have a, I love my, I call her my coach. She's like a coach healer and she kicks my butt every month, but I'm always better for it. And so, uh, she, and she, what she'll say, when you me, kick your butt, is it like a personal trainer kick your butt? Uh, you know what? I have to tell you, it, feel, it feels <laughs> like it at times. It feels I sometimes will feel cause you know, she'll have exercises to help you release anger. And that's another thing I've learned through the process. A lot of times like angry, 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 but under anger is a lot of times sadness. There are all these layers to our emotion. A lot of times it's not just a one, one shot answer, but what I've learned from her and something that she keeps. And if you look around the office, I have quotes from her up, but she's like, let go of the story. And so for instance, I was talking, I don't like our neighbors or just, they, anyway, just, I say, just be a good, decent human being. And I believe they struggle with that. So something happened and she said, well, how do you know that? And I said, cause my intuition told me, and I believe in, in your intuition and following it. She's like, but those aren't facts. We don't know if that is a fact because they had done something and I believe that my intuition is right. But she's like, but let's remove that because then we get caught up in the it, 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 instead of being neutral. And so it doesn't matter whether they did it or not. Focus on sending them love when they get you angry. Instead of she's like, you get angry with them, drop to your knees and pray and what you're trying to create in your life because there's something I'm really working on to create. And I thought, doesn't it make more sense to drop to my knees and pray to create what I want instead of choosing to spend all my energy going, oh my God, why don't they take care of their lawn? Why? Eh? What would you rather spend your time on? Mm-hmm. But it's a choice. And so I'm aware in that moment because of my awareness. I wouldn't have been aware of that probably a year ago. And so again, it's the layers becoming more aware. Now that you're aware of it, I think that's half the battle. But then what are you going to choose to do next? Are you going to choose to push the romantic partner away? Or are you going to choose to bring her in? It's your choice. Mm-hmm. Anxious, exhausted, stressed out, losing your mind, ready to get your life back. Go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how Julie Caraccio can support you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that. that. That's that's where I struggle right now, for sure. But we all do. Yeah. you're not alone in that. You know, but it, but it's interesting you say that you you know instead of this person frustrates me, instead of in that moment let them frustrate me, um, find in yourself a way to turn it. That's something I've been trying to do myself a lot recently. That I used to. I don't know if it, it's like bred a lot in pro wrestling. It happens mm-hmm. a lot. Like this guy gets this, mm-hmm. and I don't. This guy's doing this and this pisses me off. I don't know if it's because it's, we're pretending to be in conflict all the time that we create our own real conflict, but like there's a lot of conflict to things. And sometimes right. out of it comes great art. But at the same time, too, it it boils over into you always being in conflict with everything. And then but real, you create that. It, exactly. And, and I don't think it's a, a positive thing, especially – when you get outside of stuff, and that's why I see a lot of wrestlers, once they get back into the real world, mm-hmm. it never really works out that well because they've got this idea of conflict, and they spend more t- I, time on the conflict as opposed to what needs to be going on. And the other thing I would say, like, you know, I've tried to cut – I'm doing a daily gratitude on my personal Facebook page. I felt really 
drawn to do that every day this year. And Facebook is wearing me down because of all the nasty things that people are posting. And so someone got angry that I was posting positive stuff all the time. And so... <laughs> Heaven forbid. Right. Well, you know, and so I, I wrote a thing and... And what I remind people, I'm like, you know what? It's time for another post on this. If I, you get angry about my happy post and gratitude, that is a gift to you because that has nothing to do with me. It's your anger. What, how I react, I am 100% responsible for that. But how you react, you're 100% responsible for it. It doesn't matter what I do. Focus on your action. You can't judge another unless you judge yourself. And we all do that. I mean, maybe like the Dalai Lama doesn't, people who are completely evolved and spiritually aware, but that's very rare. And so whatever, you know, if you see, oh, they're a blah, blah, and negative thing, you have that within you. And whatever's irritating you and someone else, look within. It's always look within. We have all the answers we need in here. But it's easier and a lot less exhausting to be like, oh, you're an idiot. Instead of being like, wow, what's inside of me that I think I'm an idiot? Oh, I totally agree. There, there's far more work to do in that, in in yourself, and realizing what's wrong with me first. That's mm -hmm. why. At any time there's a dispute that I have with anybody, I always try to figure out like, did I really do something wrong here before saying you're an idiot? That's something I don't know why the that was. I think in that's me. a good thing. You're I, looking, uh, and, the, and 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 it's not wrong. And I don't like to talk in terms of right or wrong. It's not wrong. Like I came, we took the car to get inspected and we have tinted windows and it's past inspection five years. And I was annoyed and I came home and I said, Tony, and we ran it. We both were like, Rawr. you know what? But it was great because there were things underneath that we both had to get off our chest and we weren't angry at each other, but it was beneficial because I think people, what they do is they stuff or they don't acknowledge. Well, everything's energy. So if you don't acknowledge that anger, it's going to find a way to come out, and it might be screaming at the neighbor. Neighbor, it doesn't matter what the neighbor did. Your anger or your sadness or your shame or whatever it is will find a way to make it out. You just can't stuff it, except that I think that we do. A lot of us do that. I know if I get stressed out, I might try to have ice cream. That's something I have struggled with all my life, emotional eating. And I share that because someone else out there might be struggling with it. doesn't make me good or bad, but okay, I'm aware. So then the next step for me is okay, I really got to express this anger instead of eating potato chips. And again, becoming more aware and putting that into practice. Absolutely. But uh, I want to take a step, uh, a baby step back to something okay. you were saying there about social media, about putting positive things mm -hmm. online. That's, that's another thing in my life that I've tried to do more of. You know what I'm saying? There's, yeah. I think there's a lot of people that um, uh, you know, put a lot of negative stuff out there, as we all know. Uh, and I even do this thing. Uh, you could either tell me I'm crazy or this. Or you might, I, I have a feeling you're going to think this. What I've gotten in a habit of, of people who I don't particularly care for mm -hmm. or or don't really agree with, or even in some ways I'm like, I don't really even like, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm friends with them on Facebook or on Twitter or whatever because of work or I right. know them enough. And they post something online about something good that happened to him. Now, as opposed to getting mad that they did something, or even if it's just a basic post like, hey, I did this today, nothing... Mm -hmm. Too overly dramatic or really great. I force myself. I'm like, I have a feeling that I don't like this person right now because of this, but I'm going to hit like because I know that might they might be happy because they got an extra like on this Facebook post. But see, good for you because what did you just put out there? You it, put exactly. out something positive. Exactly. Even though I was like, I don't particularly like you, or I, I'm, I'm maybe even a little upset, but like at the same time too, I'm just gonna I'm gonna like it. Maybe a little bit out of spite, but at the same time too, I feel like that's it's, it's in, in the positive column. But you're as moving positive. in the right direction, yeah. and the more you do that, then that and express yourself and get out your feelings, the easier it is. And I view, and I don't like to use the word goal. I, in my practice, try to get to a place of neutrality and objectivity. Oh, they said something really hateful. That's interesting. No judgment. It, hmm, it is what it is. And so I don't waste my energy and get invested in that and try to change them and say, you're right or you're wrong. And that's what's been driving me nuts lately. That's what my, beside pictures of cats, is you're right or I'm right, you're wrong. And it's just fascinating to me that people just can get so ugly so quickly. And I had this realization in this past week. I'm not a fan of Congress. I think they're awful. But based on what I've been seeing on Facebook and social media the past month, I'm like, we get what we deserve. They are a reflection of American society. And the more we recognize it and accept it and can start to change it, because what are people doing 
on Facebook, screaming at each other, calling each other per- names. There's no room for compromise. That's exactly what Congress does. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, but but more on, on the on the topic of social media. Like, is it, I, it, we are a, of a generation that's mm-hmm. never experienced have have an example of anybody experiencing anything like this before. Like, yeah. like we are the, basically the guinea pigs of what this is going to do to a culture. Right. As somebody who's trying to think positively and, you know, tr- you know, try and remove the clutter from your life, what does social media do to, to something like that? I just had a podcast on my podcast, Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, where I, for the month of July, did a 10-minute thing that you can do this week to declutter. And so I did physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic, and mental was unplugging. And I talked, and I talked about sp- Facebook, and there was a stat. It's something like 39,000 years people spend on Facebook each day. It was such a ridiculous stat. You're like, oh my gosh, that's really insane. And so whether it's social media or whether it's video games, taking time to unplug, what is it costing you? You know, I don't know if you've seen on social media that great photography exhibit where the guy has all these pictures of people and he's removed the smartphones and the tablets. And, you know, you see a couple in bed both staring at the phone instead of being with each other or people are out eating. I think that it's, I think there are great things about social media, but I also think there are negative things. And if you have to unplug from Facebook, if I wasn't doing my daily gratitude, I would. And I try to really limit the t- amount of time that I spend it. And then they've done studies that people, your jealousy can increase because of the post that you see people. <clears throat> then I just read an article this week. I was skimming the mo- news, excuse me, and I laughed. It was like, how to have these selfies that you can post on Facebook looking like you went on a great vacation if you're not going anywhere this summer. Well, why do you need to do that? That's dishonest. What do you feel you're lacking? Why do you feel you need to to do that? Yeah, and that's a, that's a curious thing and something that I've noticed as well, and I don't know, and I'd be curious to, to that brings up an interesting point that a realization I've, I've realized about myself is when I look at people like, like when I look at people like, oh, this guy always gets this and he always gets that. And then I look at his Facebook posts and it's like, I'm here and I'm doing this and I'm on this show and I'm booked and I'm wrestling this person. And I'm like, gosh, why does this guy always get the same breaks? But then it took me a second to realize like, no, we're doing the same exact things. It's just, he's posting everything. I'm not posting everywhere where I'm at. I'm doing just as much as him. I'm just as successful as him. Right. It just, you yourself trick yourself into believing that they have more for whatever reason. They don't have more. They have the same, but different. Right. Do do you think that's a game that we all play on ourselves? I, I don't know. That's kind of hard because I don't know if I would feel comfortable making a broad statement like that because I think things are so individual and there are people that I can think of that, oh my gosh, they wouldn't play that game at all. Mm-hmm. And like I mentioned earlier, one, you don't know if, if people like that are telling the truth, if they're being honest. I think also I would expand my definition of success. Well, I woke up tomor- this morning. I'm breathing. That's a success. I have an awesome husband. I have a roof over my head. I have clean drinking water. That's a success because I think we don't have enough gratitude. And so that's one of the reasons for posting the daily gratitude. It's for me just as much as I feel other people benefit. People have said to me privately, I really appreciate you posting this, especially when I'm in a bad mood. It reminds me, be grateful that day. So I think that, you know, we see we focus on what we don't have instead of taking the time to focus on what we do have and everything's energy. So if you focus in gratitude and love and appreciation, that just opens up more possibilities to you. It's like opening. Whereas if you're focused, I don't have this. It's like uh, you're squeezing a straw and how can abundance and how can the things that you desire come into your life when it's, when you shut it off? Cause that's when you do, when you have those things and you know, monitoring your thoughts is a full-time job. It, it's not easy. And I've d- worked at this a lot, and I still have a lot of work to go. I'm always going to be learning. I'm always going to be growing. And I can easily slip into that. But it's like, okay, how? but I'm aware more than I was. And each day, is like, even if it's a tad, or even if I take a step back, that's okay. I'm working that awareness muscle. So if I know about it, then I can change it. Mm-hmm. And, and being in the moments and, and accepting that life for where we're at right now, mm-hmm. which is which is something that, like I said, like for me, like improv was the thing that got me out of my comfort zone and got me to do that. Because like I said, yeah. it's always about you don't want to be too plot heavy on an improv scene like, oh, we're going to go do this. And that, you can't yeah. you can't do that because it's all about, you know, where are we at right now? Mm-hmm. What is our relationship? 
right. what are we doing right now? Okay, if we're doing this, then what would be the next thing I say if we're doing that? You know, you can't be too plot heavy. You have to be in the moment and, and living that way. And you talk a lot about that yourself, but like, what's just the importance of being in the moment and the benefits of that in our lives? The benefit of being in the moment? Yeah. Because you're in the present moment. That's how you can change. If you're focused on the past, how do you change that? And how if you focus on your mistakes, your regret of the past, what do you think you're going to attract more of? And conversely, if you're in the future, oh my gosh, what am I, da, 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 how can you change the future? It hasn't happened. But you're writing it by focusing on worry. If for, so, for example, if you are angry that you had a crappy boss and you're mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh, they sucked, they never appreciated me. Well, what's the takeaway in the present moment for that? I need to have better boundaries. I need to be able to stand up for myself. I need to be able to express myself. Or, wow, what a gift. I can leave this job. I finally figured out this boss doesn't treat me well. I don't deserve that. I'm going to make a choice to look for a new job. Or if I'm worried, oh, I don't know if I'm going to have enough for retirement. Okay, well, I can spend worry, worry, worry over here, or I can be in the present moment and say, okay, I can stop Starbucks five times a day and, and make it down to once a week to treat myself. And from all that money I'm going to save, I'm going to put that in investing. I'm going to talk to my friend and say, who, how did you start investing? How do you save for retirement? And that's where you take action to change your life because we're always creating our life. And again, everything is energy. So if you're on worry, 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 what's going to come into your life? Worry. Right. And again, there's no, there's no judgment in this. There's no right or wrong. It's how can I be aware? How can I observe? And then make the change. I mean, I have, you know, I feel like a baby. I feel like I'm at the beginning of this. There's still so much for me to learn and to grow. And I know I've already done a lot. You know, and again, it's a process. But I make the choice. Okay, do I want to be aware? And there are days I don't want to be aware. Mm, I don't, don't want to be an adult. I want to just lay in bed and throw in the covers and want to do And that's okay because I'm... A human being. I believe I'm a spiritual being in this human experience. So I have to honor that. I can't always be spiritual. We were watching uh, Game of Thrones the other day, and when, uh, uh, what's the guy's awful name? And when Jon Snow was beating him, and my husband laughing at me. Oh, like, Ramsey. Right, I'm, 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 I'm well aware who that guy is. <laughs> you know, and so I'm literally throwing punches, and my husband's looking at me, and I'm like, oh, wow, that felt good. Or I'll laugh. I'm a huge Steelers fan, although I didn't watch last year because they had Michael Vick on the team, and I'm a huge animal person. But I um, I go nuts when I watch football. And people, I'll never forget, I had some spiritual friends over who just looked at me when they watched a game, and I was like, you know what? I'm still human, and I love football, and it brings me joy, and I'm going to be screaming and coaching from the sidelines. It's who I am, and that's not good or bad. It's who I am. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and, and something that, that I've – also learned, I mean, I keep keep circling back to improv because a lot of things that you sure, say sure. just circle kind of that. And, and if I find it very unique that the, the lessons I learned in that are very similar to the lessons that, that you teach and you understand mm-hmm. and, and the things that you preach in your podcast and your coaching and everything yeah. that you do. And I just find it fascinating. And like one thing, there's these two two guys who are considered the improv masters, TJ and Dave. Okay, They do an hour-long show together. Uh, I probably every week or, or very often mm-hmm. and they go into the scenes with basically nothing and they do an entire hour long show and wow and they just do it they're mm-hmm. like they're the masters of it and I listened to a radio lab podcast of them talking about it and something that I can't remember if TJ said it or Dave said it and it, it stuck with me the last couple of weeks since it, it it's been said and it's very similar to what we were talking about now is the idea of you know they're always like you're always in the moment you're always in the being but he says, he comes into every show because obviously people are paying money to right, see you perform. Right, yeah, yeah. So there's a sense of expectations right. there. But he talked about how he wished that he, every time that he lives life the way he does improv, his life is better. Because in an improv show, he comes in with no expectations of where mm-hmm. this is going to go. They just let it go where it's going to go, yes. which is a very impressive thing when, like I said, people are paying money and they're mm-hmm. expecting a good show. But he says, because you can't think like that. You have to come in with no expectations. There's a great quote by Anne Lamott, who's a writer that I love, and she said, uh, Expe- expectations are resentments under construction, which I think there's a lot of truth to that. And so it's about... Having hope. There's something I'm really trying to create right now. I'm being like, okay, create this, but have no expectation. And that's, especially when it's something you desire so, so much, that's a challenge. 
And okay, well, what can I do today? That's right when my coach was like, when you get annoyed at the neighbors, drop to your knees and pray. Focus on what you desire. Put, put the extra effort there instead of spinning your wheels. Because when I focus on someone else, then that takes away, well, well, I don't have to focus on myself. I don't have to change myself. Mm-hmm. And well, I want to change myself. I want to be the best that I can be. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, 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 when you were talking about that, it's the other thing that popped in mind. So one of the things I'm changing is in my life, and I'm, I'm very much an interesting mix of type A and very intuitive, and I'm trying to have that meld better. And so the past couple of weeks, I have been what I consider a slug. I'm German. You know, we work 24-7. I have a business. There's always something you can do. But for the ca- past couple of weeks, I'm like, I don't have anything. I had, you had a couple of things scheduled here and there, but had a lot of flexibility. I'm like, I don't feel like doing anything. I watch TV a lot, and we don't watch a lot of TV, although we're in season five or we're in the halfway through Breaking Bad. I'm dying to see how it ends. But so I spent a couple of weeks watching TV. Now, here's what's interesting. So after a couple of weeks of that, woke up Monday. I got more done in four hours than I probably would have gotten in done in two weeks because I honored what I was feeling. I didn't want to write. I didn't want to do anything with the podcast. I just wanted to be. Spent some time sleeping in addition to that, spent some time meditating. And when I cleared that clutter and just let myself be, I was able to focus and get in a tremendous amount of work done in four hours. But I was in the moment I knew, okay, write, 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 sit down. You get like, it's coming. And I honored what I wanted to do. Instead of, I think there is, what I work with is do be. So doing and being. Because yes, we need to do, but here's an example. So you want to teach an improv class. You want to do something with your improv. And so people are like, hey, we're looking for an improv person to join our group. And so maybe there are five groups doing this. And so you're like, oh, I really would like to do this. So you interview or you do whatever. And you do. You show them improv and then you be. Okay, if they're going to call, they're going to call. Maybe you follow up. That comes back to my type A of I think it's good business, good personal sense to follow up. But then you be again. Okay, you've, you've done your due diligence and then you let it go. However the chips fall, they fall. But you've done and then you become being instead of like, oh, are they going to call me or are going to do this or what else can I do? Or maybe I can find if someone knows them and can put in a good word for me, da 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 and then we get into that monkey mind. Well, let's bring it back to being and, and balancing that doing and being. Uh, that's uh, uh, very intriguing because that's where I, I fall a lot with my stand-up right now mm-hmm. because I feel like my better stand-up sets are done when I just – you know, I just be, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And have those no expectations, mm-hmm. get yeah. up there and, and just, all I have to worry about is being funny. But it's when I think about doing like, I wrote this new joke, I have to do this, or this person's in the crowd and then they might book me for a show. It never goes right. as well as it, as it's ever supposed to. Right. Ever, ever. Because of whatever reason, that mm-hmm. monkey brain, I guess it would be a good mm-hmm. way to put it. Yeah. But it, the idea of just, just being is the idea that I, I always try. I guess I wish I could be like that more. You know what I'm saying? Like, and practice a little bit each day. I am a huge fan of having some type of mindfulness practice, whether it's meditation. For me, mowing, I love to mow the lawn. I hate edging, but I love mowing the lawn because that's very meditative for me. I feel like I just mow the lawn and I feel like it's a, a dump for me. Like I can just let all these thoughts go. Maybe for someone, I know for a couple friends, they love classical music. That's a way for them to relax. And so have a mindfulness practice or spend five minutes being aware of your thoughts. And okay, well, how can I change? How can I grow? What do I need to be more aware of? And the more you do that and being in the present moment, like stopping yourself, setting the alarm every hour. Okay, where am I? Am I present or am I worried in the future or thinking about the future or am I stuck in the past? Because most of us, I think, are anywhere but being present. You know, I'm here present with you and engaged in conversation, but I know, you know, maybe it was an interview, but maybe you're out with your friends and you can tell, okay, they're, they're not here. They're thinking about the laundry or the grocery list that they do. They will be fully present. And, you know, doing interviews has really helped me with that too, because sometimes people send you questions and sometimes they don't, but you have to be fully present. You have to listen. Well, maybe you're going to have a follow-up question, or maybe you're not going to ask anything that you sent me. So I have to be fully engaged and fully present in order to to respond or to respond well. Paid late fees because you can't find your bills? Child miss out on a field trip because of a lost permission slip? Missing out on reimbursements because you can't find your receipts? 
go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how Julie Caraccio can assist you. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Like, definitely doing this podcast is this is actually the only time I get to really talk to people. Oh, as, really? As, I, as as weird as that sounds, uh, especially now that my girlfriend is out of town right now, mm-hmm. she she travels a lot, so I actually don't talk to people hardly at all. And especially sometimes I even open mics. I'm just worried about my own stuff, and mm-hmm. I get up. So basically, me standing in front of a crowd of strangers on a live microphone, and this is the really the only time that I emit words mm-hmm. past. Hey, can you hand me this? Or hey, do you, when do you need this done? You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that's what I find very interesting. So, and that's I tried and I wish I could get more of this because I feel like this this right here, what we're doing is living. This is right. being in the moment. This mm-hmm. is I'm listening to you. What you're saying goes through my head. Then it pops into something that I've heard, and then I give that back to you, and then right. you, and we bounce back and forth. I don't get a lot of this. That's so then I, try every when you're going to Starbucks. Mm-hmm. Can you engage someone in conversation? And, you know, maybe you can't, maybe you can't, but make the effort. Like, how can you have, you know, because I, I find that sometimes you just meet really neat people randomly and start a conversation. I always try, let, can, I, can I be curious? Why do you think the way you do? What is it that you do? What drives you? What is your passion? And being curious. We had, um, I'll never forget, my uncles came to visit, and we have a little place that we go to here a lot to eat, and they were asking the waitress all these questions, and we ended up having this fabulous conversation because, you know, I'm all about clutter. And she was talking about she was from Vietnam. And she said, you know, I move here. And she said, I don't understand. Why do people go crazy the day after Thanksgiving just to buy stuff they're going to throw in their closet? And she said it much more articulately than I'm saying it now. But I was like, wow, she really gets it. And just by, hey, what do you do? What makes you tick? And, you know, she's our waitress. So what are you about? Just start a conversation. Most people, I think, are really open to that. Some aren't. And, oh, well, if they aren't, that's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, but just because that feeds you obviously. So do something that feel what I'm trying to do every day is have fun in some small way to be mindful in some small way and have good self care for myself in some small way, because I had to switch. I used to be my harshest critic. I'm like, why are you being your harshest critic? Why aren't you being your best friend? You should love you more than anyone else. And so how and, and checking in, how am I being loving to myself? How am I not being loving to myself? How can I change that? Oh, it's funny that you have the list of three things. I, I should bring it up since we're in the Raleigh area because of uh, Jim Valvano. Uh, he used to say that the three keys to life uh, is every day you have to laugh, you have to be lost in deep thought, and you have to be emotionally moved. He oh, I never you, heard that. He okay, said if good. you do those three things every day, you will have a, a better life. Mm-hmm. So I just th- just because we're in Raleigh, right? Did, no, did, good. You should bring it up. And you're listening. I thought I'd just uh, throw that out there because it's very similar to kind of what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Is the but idea? But find what works for you. Yeah. This is what works for me. I encourage everyone needs something different. So we all have the answers within. When I work with people, I view it as supporting them to get that knowledge that they have. I don't know anything better, and I encourage people to be very, you know, I went to clairvoyant school. I think it was it was self-discovery for me. There are people who can do that and have that, but you ultimately know what's best for you, so honor that. And if you see someone like that, and if doesn't something doesn't sound right, then honor that. Don't give your power away to thinking someone, oh, they can see and blah, 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 they know what's going to happen. The future's written in pencil. Don't ever let anyone take your power away. I've had, I can't tell you how many people have to say, well, this is going to happen or blah, 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 and it hasn't. I'm like, no, thanks. I'm going to stand in my power and not let you influence me because we create our reality. And I think people have made uh, errors in planting seeds in people that have have uh, influenced them in a way that perhaps wasn't best for them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and and I like you keep bringing up that the answers are, are in ourselves and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And, and having conversations like that is, yeah. it, 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 like this, are important, especially with other people yeah. like this. Like, I, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of wrestling friends who I can talk to like this. <laughs> I don't think we've quite achieved that type of, uh, you know, closeness with some mm-hmm. people and the people I do have that closest with, I don't know if they've ever thought like this. <laughs> right, right. Um, but but like, you may be surprised. So be open to what else is possible. Maybe, maybe, maybe I need to uh, as far as that goes. But like the idea of, of, of self-help in itself and then also, you talk, you know, clairvoyant school and mm-hmm. stuff and, and being surrounded by people like yourself having conversations like this, um, you know, it, 
what do you, what do you, obviously those are things that are help. And I feel like it's far, far more helpful, but like, obviously people who have been close to me and, and relationship partners and people who I've been mm-hmm. with and, and girlfriends have told me that, Hey, maybe you need to see uh, like a psychologist and other people like that. And I'm, I'm worried about going to those people uh, uh, for help. You know what I'm saying? Like, as I'm worried, like, what are they going to do? Are they going to prescribe me something or are they going to tell and me something? Ask, ask yeah. for support, ask for guidance. Okay. I'm concerned about this, but can you, if you was a psychologist or whatever it is Mm -hmm. that you want to find, or I want to find a counselor or whatever, ask for help. Start asking every day. Okay. And then you pay attention to someone just, oh, you know what? My sister-in-law just saw this great psychologist that really helped her. And then if you see a lecture in the paper by someone or a book by someone, be aware of that because the universe is always giving you in there, God, whatever your, your phrase is. But are you listening? Because it's sometimes not a shout. Now, I like to say a couple times I've gotten smacked by a two-by-four when I haven't been paying attention. But ask for that. The universe, God, I believe, wants you to be happy, wants you to be joyful, wants to give you that guidance. So ask for help. Mm-hmm. And, and then say, okay, this is what I want. And maybe seeing a psychologist or psychiatrist isn't the right fit for you. See, I don't feel like it is. Like and I then trust okay. that and honor that. Yeah. So maybe it's a coach. Like I see, I call her a coach healer. She's definitely not a psychiatrist, a psychologist. I've done therapy, Mm -hmm. and I'm glad I had the experience, but I would never go to a therapist again because of my how my spirituality and my personal development has has moved forward. That wouldn't work for me. It would not be the right fit for me. And if it's not the right fit for you, honor that and say, okay, well, I know I want to be a better man, so start throwing things my way and then see what you get. Okay, because I like I said I just I don't know how like like a therapist like how that relates with with your world of life coaching. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd say, you know, it's so interesting. In some elements, I would say yes because I've done both coaching and worked with a therapist. Because you need someone that's going to listen. You need someone that's going to have good skills. But I would say they follow kind of a textbook. And again, I'm not a trained therapist, but that's just my observation. Whereas I listen to my intuition, I take notes, I I look at things to help people. I'm trying to think, you know, here's an example. I was working with a client and, you know, she would say, well, my brother says this, my sister says this. And I'm like, but what do you say? You have the right to say no. Hey, thank you. I'm glad that this worked for you, but this doesn't work for me. And you are allowed to say no to them. You are allowed to stand up for yourself. You know, and a therapist might approach that in a, in a very different manner. But, you know, whatever's going on the outside is reflected in the inside. So let's talk about this. Let's figure out what's going on. If you're unhappy in your career, it might have, it might start at a different angle or a different level. And so exploring that. It's all about helping people clear their clutter, finding that voice within and moving forward and taking action. I worked with a client who I always give homework to clients and never did her homework. And I was like, if you're not going to do your homework, don't waste your time anymore. Because if you don't take action, you don't take steps, your life's not going to change. That's kind of that balance of doing and being. I believe in having a mindfulness practice, but I believe in, okay, let's write a book to support people and to get clients. I just can't sit back and say, okay, I'm just going to sit in my house and I know people are going to magically find me. Got to have a website, got to be active on social media. You have to do all those things. Mm, Absolutely. Um, You know, you do life coaching yourself. Yeah. You know, like, like, you know, we've been talking all over, but like, I'd like to let people know about the things you do and stuff like that. Like you're very big on clearing out the clutter. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want to get people to know about like some of your philosophies, how people can get, like, you know, your type of teaching, all this kind of stuff. Like, what are, what are the things that you're doing and why did you start? Like, you could just be a person that receives life coaching and you can go about your day. You could be a nice banker, you know what I'm saying, right, and have right. these thoughts. But what made you want to get in the profession of, of doing all the things that you do? Well, that's interesting. I was at a job. My background most recently had been in fund development. So I was the director of development and I worked for a nonprofit that is no longer in existence. They ran it into the ground, but... Three years before that happened, I knew pretty quickly in the job this was, I don't want to call it a mistake because if you learn, it's not a mistake. And I have gratitude for that job because it was so horrible and they treated me so poorly. I don't know if I would have the guts to start my own business otherwise. So I knew pretty immediately. I only worked there 13 months and I thought this is where the 
action and the type A comes in, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to start my own business. Well, what do I want to do? Okay, well, what am I good at? Well, I'm type A and people have always had me help them organize. And so did research. Oh, wow, this is actually a profession. People do it. So before leaving the job, got all the ducks in a row. But I had a really interesting thing happen. So when I first started my business, it was healing through organization because I saw how getting people organized helped them heal. But as the process of working with people, and in the meantime, I had done a show, Reawaken Your Brilliance, which was an internet TV show where I interviewed body, mind, and spirit experts. And now that is my business name, Reawaken Your Brilliance. But it became apparent to me that clearing the clutter was what it was really about. And that it wasn't just physical clutter. There was mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic. There can be clutter in relationships. There can be clutter in your finances, health. I mean, it really... To me, clutter is anything, it's stuck stagnant energy, it's delayed decisions, that pile that you're not dealing with, it's anything that prevents you from moving forward in your life. And that's what gets me really excited because when people clear the clutter, they can create the life that they desire. And so I'd been working with a client and I walk, work in blocks of time because it takes a lot of time to clear clutter and get organized. And we were, she said, I, I just want to talk. So I said, okay. So we ended up talking probably three hours a little more than that. And she said, at one point, she said, I know I can tell this is making you a little nervous. And she said, but this is really helping me. So I know a skill set that I have is listening and giving feedback and, and, and that support. And then we spent the rest of the time clearing her clutter. And I came back again. She said, this really helped me. She said, after you left, I was able to clear stuff and, and do that. So she needed kind of that coaching aspect. And so that was the aha moment for me, like, you know what, the clutter's really want to, where I want to focus on. So, you know, change my business name to Reawaken Your Brilliance. I support people not only through life coaching, but professional organizing. But one thing that I've started to do is I have a, a do-it-yourself assessment. So, like, I work with coaching clients all over the country. But if you're like, I need to get my house organized and clear clutter, I have a really detailed assessment. We send you a customized plan. I'm going to have three books hopefully out by then January, but I also, one thing that I'm really proud of and excited about is I created a declutter your life course. So it's three months, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and then a, a month of clearing energetic clutter. And it's set up to support you and to not fail. It's set up to into very manageable steps. If you're really motivated, you could probably complete it more quickly. But one of the things I found is people get overwhelmed and stop. And so it's set up so that you don't have, okay, just do this one step this week and, and build in, upon that. And so uh, that those are ways that I help people and I love it. And then I do the podcast, which is clearing the clutter inside and out. Again, I really love that. And the other thing I've started to do, it's also available. Uh, I make it a video so people who are visual can mm -hmm. look at the podcast. But I've started to do live Facebook live streaming, which has been fun, but it's, you know, you know, you do a podcast that takes planning yep. and effort and editing and all that. And so it's been kind of fun to stretch that live muscle again. And if people have questions, they can ask. And I've enjoyed that as well. So those are just different ways that I support people. Yeah. And like you, like, like, obviously, like, what are some like the walks of life of people, like the wide variety of people that come to you for coaching and removing the clutter in their life? You know, it's different. I've started, it's funny, I coach other professional organizers, which I really enjoy. That's mm -hmm. just sort of happened. I do some podcast coaching. I'm, I have helped a professional organizer set up hers and my podcast has done pretty well. It's not, you know, the top 1%. It's not what's that great one that has a bazillion downloads that does the crime thing that just... Serial. Thank you, serial, yeah. that it's not, not there, but it continually grows. So I've obviously, people are getting something out of it. So that and then the professional organizing, it really varies. I would say that most people that come to me, and I do a, a little assessment and phone talk because I don't want to... I want to be able to support you. If I'm not the right match, I don't, you know, I want to help you find someone else. I, I only work with people that I believe I'm a good fit for. Um, and I just lost my train of thought. Don't worry, another train will be coming uh, by in the next five minutes. <laughs> walk, walk of life, walk of life. And so, but I would say that the connection that they make is that that they get that the clutter is just, it's not just all about the physical clutter. And that's not to say there's sometimes life situational clutter. You have a new baby, you might have clutter coming in and there's not anything else going on. But for the most part, I found there's some kind of connection, but I want to take it beyond that. You can have no physical clutter, but you got other clutter going on. And so whatever's going on the inside is reflected in your outside environment. And the more you 
work with one, you're able to release the other. But why not clear that clutter and be happy and share your gifts with the world? That's what gets me excited. When you clear your clutter, you can be passionate, you can be joyful. And what if we were living in a world where everyone cleared their clutter? We would live in a much different world than the one we live in now. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, since this is a podcast and you, and yeah. you talked a little bit like, 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 let's talk about some, some things about, about your podcast. Like, like I said, once again, you could have just been somebody that got life coaching and became a banker, but no, now you're life right. coaching, you do all kinds of courses and you could just do all kinds of courses, but not do a podcast. Right. What would push you, push you to do a podcast and what kind of made it as successful as it has been? Um, that's really funny. Again, that's one of those listening to intuition. So I'd been doing reawaken your brilliance and, the university, the universe and God were kind of poking me saying, okay, this has run its course. You need to end it. And so finally a couple things happened. And I'm like, okay, I can't ignore that any longer. So I knew, again, I'm a planner. So I was like, okay, I'm going to end that in June, 2014, but I want to do something else. So I had gone to see my coach and she works in a two hour block and come home and I get this, uh, little free seminar on doing a podcast. And I'm like, I actually downloaded it because I couldn't see it live and I watched it. It was like 90 minutes. I'm like, I never do that. So then literally that happened. And the next day I get an email from someone who I became friends with this man on social media and really like him. And his friend was teaching a new thing on using Hangouts to do podcasts. And then there, I think at that point, I can't remember if there was a third thing, but I'm like, okay, you need to investigate this more and here are some signs. And so I really felt I was guided to it. And so I did the coaching. It was a group coaching thing that was very beneficial, but then I've learned to kind of build upon that. I think it's been successful because I, I put myself into it. You know, I talk about how I struggle. Like, you know, I've talked about some things today that other people would got, Oh my gosh, I can't believe you're making it public. Well, if it supports someone else, when we share our hurts and our pains and our disappointments, that allows others to do the same thing. And when you, you need to release it. If you stuff it down, you will never be able to let go of it. And when I did the interviewing, everyone who was on the show, especially people who were in a healing capacity, I would say, yeah, I kind of went through the fire and it was a lot easier to go through the fire than holding on to the hurt. And you think, and I speak from self-experience and, and all my healing I had to do. I'm like, ah, why didn't anyone tell me this? I would have healed a long time ago. Cause it's much easier to do that than holding on to it. So, um, I think also cause I do a video podcast, I put myself into it and I'm passionate. I think people pick up on that. Do you keep saying you'll declutter, get organized, or pursue your dreams someday, but someday hasn't come? Learn how Julie Caraccio can support you at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Uh, that's great. Like, and, and like, how did, how did, like, as opposed to just putting out there the world, like, how did you get it out to, to be, you know, as large as it has been? Like, you know, well, we definitely would like to continue to continue to grow. Obviously. Well, you know, so I, I did, the coaches said, put like, I put, um, I, that's the other thing I want to say. I don't think there's a set formula for yeah, success. I don't think so either. Follow sure. Cause like so I've read post exactly when you post up to iTunes, post three shows that has been, I'm like, who cares? So I, what I did is I do a weekly podcast and then have a bonus at some point in the month. So when I first launched it, I have five episodes and then started it's it, because it's Tuesdays at one started the weekly routine. So I think that helped. I also, I posted in some foreign things cause I thought, well, people speak English all over the world. Why not? Mm -hmm. I found a woman in podcasting thing and I think it's now defunct, but then I did stitcher. I did posted it everywhere that I could. I have a strong social media presence and there, I'm always looking to build on that, but it was kind of like one of those things. I was like, oh wow, people are actually tuning in and listening. And I didn't know until I did some research that I'm like, you know, you're doing pretty well considering. And I just talked to, I had an interview last night and he told me, and I didn't know this. He said, most people quit their podcast within three months. And I said, really? I had no idea about that. So I think Again, because I take a, have a different take on it, I, because I think so many times people think of clutter being physical and not looking at the other areas, and I'm authentic. And this is what I would want to say to anyone, whether it's a podcast, 
whether it's your personal life, or your professional life, be authentic and be you. Don't be a poor imitation of, of someone else. Don't jack other people's stuff and then try to slap your thing on it because it's not. You know, as I've said during the podcast, everything is energy. So people, even if they can't articulate it, if it's inauthentic, they pick up on it. And at some point, when you do stuff like that, you just, you get found out and you, you just never know, but people at a deeper level pick up on it. So I'm not saying don't talk about gratitude because I talked about gratitude today. That would be completely ridiculous. What I'm saying is how do you express gratitude? How, what's your view on it? Make it your own. Don't just take my podcast episode and use my examples and repurpose it as your own content. That's not okay. Mm. Be yourself. You are awesome. Be yourself and celebrate it. Absolutely. Like I said, and I'm a big believer in the video portion as well because mm-hmm. it's just people are more visual. And also, too, some people just put their, their podcast on YouTube, but they just put a still image up. And I'm always like, well, just put up a camera. Right, just, right. Just, just do it. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but that's, I, you know, and we say you were active in posting things. Actually, the way that I got in contact with you is through uh, podcastguest.com. So that's how we've ended up here today. So, you know, just getting out there and and And, and I would say the other thing is that I encourage people, be part of the we community, not the me community. I don't have people as guests who don't promote the show. You and it goes live. I'm always tell people if you want it written, promote it away, a tag. I promote everything. I promote it when it first comes out. I usually promote it a month later and then six months down the road. If I know a guest that might be a fit for you, I'm going to say, hey, maybe check out this connection. Because I think a lot of people are always me, 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 me. And make it about the we. When you make it about the we, it benefits you in the long run. And the me thing is about scarcity. I'm not going to have enough. Or I need to take viewers for someone. No, not in the bigger picture. You don't. So be the person. And if you're on a podcast, share that. And if you're doing... um, You know, if you're a podcaster who interviews, talk about other podcasts you like. It just, it supports everyone. And I believe in the long run, you're better off. Absolutely. Totally agree. And let's do the big secret of the internet. Just keep keep posting it. Like I said, three months, people quit. If you just keep doing it long enough, you just, uh, you're the only one left standing sometimes. Right, right. And, And find your niche. Find what, you know, mine's clutter from a different perspective. So find what works for you. And then I expand a little bit and I talk about organizing a little bit, but the main focus is always going to be clutter. Absolutely. Um, we're getting close to the end. And uh, I always, basically this whole podcast is, is getting us to this <laughs> point. You got there very close in the conversation and I pulled away <laughs> and got us in a different direction. Cause Good I, job. Because I, I always save this towards the end. <laughs> okay. Is, is basically part of the reason I, as I do this podcast is I bring people in from all different walks of life, all varying degrees of success, and I just basically want to ask their opinions on success. What is it? it is it uh, something you think it's possible? Do you think you'll ever achieve it? Do you think if you do achieve it, you'll be, be happy and complete? Um, does it have a dollar sign attached to it? Does it need to have a dollar sign attached to it? Is it about friends and family? Is it about something more? Is it an idea? Is it an illusion? What are your thoughts when I say the word success? Oh, well, that gosh, there's so many things on that. I think that, am I successful? Absolutely. I'm successful, you know, in the traditional sense. I've won awards for organizing. I won a national award. I won a regional award. That's probably how most people would measure success in this country. The other way most people measure success is through the dollar sign. And I don't think you can do that. Come on. We all know someone that makes a ton of money that's not happy. And because they're not following their passion, not following your heart, or you read about the person that was on Wall Street and now has an animal sanctuary or is doing something completely opposite. They were making a ton of money, but weren't following the heart. They weren't following their passion. So I, I touched on it earlier, good way to steer it away, but start small. I'm a success because I woke up away today. I'm success because I'm breathing. I'm a success because I have a roof over my head. Because again, that goes back to gratitude. What are we grateful for? Because so many times we focus on what we don't have instead of being grateful for what we do have. I'm a success because I'm in a happy marriage. That is my priority. I love what I do, but my marriage is what's most important in my life. And I would say, Behind that is my personal development, my family and my personal development. I work on being a better woman every single day. So I think that's makes me a success. Do I, I don't believe, I don't like to use the word mistake because if you learn 
It's not a mistake in my eyes. Do I fall down? Absolutely. Probably more days than not. But I keep getting up. I keep doing it. I keep working on being a better woman. So I think that that makes me successful. I'm the favorite auntie. That makes me a huge success because I'm awesome and the kids love me. That is, to me, one of the best successes I can have. So I think that I'd encourage people to at first ask themselves, what does success look like for you? Are you just being joyful every day? Is that a definite for your success? So look within for the answers for that and then build upon that to figure out how you can create success. Because my definition of success, some people might be listening and be like, eh, doesn't feel right for me, and that's okay. So figure out what it means to you. But I encourage you, don't get sucked into or caught up in what society thinks is a success. Because I think our society is very narrow-minded when it comes to that. Take actions from today's podcast. Focus on what you can control, and don't worry about what you can't control. What can you do to make yourself feel worthy, good enough, or loved? If you are unhappy with something, what step can you take to change it? Practice observing something and making no judgments about it. Post something positive on social media. Honor what you need to do in the moment, whether that's sleep, watch TV, journal, or something else. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. You know, I've, I've done a lot of these. I've done like probably like well over 70 of these. This one has gone ridiculously fast. Like I've looked down at the clock and we have reached almost exactly the hour mark. Oh, have we really? And, good, and, good. And, and it has felt like 15 minutes. So like this is this has been a wonderful conversation. Um, before we get out of here, you have a live microphone. Please let everybody know where they can get in contact with you, social media wise, podcast, uh, email, whatever you want to put out in the world. You have a live microphone to let people know how they can get in contact with Excellent. You. Well, if they go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com, they can find email, phone number, smoke signal, be able to how to find me. There's a link to the podcast at the bottom of the webpage. There's a link to social media. I encourage people to connect with me, follow me. We have lots of good stuff. If you're struggling right now, the podcast is free. I always believe in doing something free for people that supports them. And then for other people, we have different things, the courses, meditations, whatever you're looking for, but reawakenyourbrilliance.com is the best place to start. Oh. Julie, thank you so much for, for taking time out of your day. I, this has been a real pleasure of mine. So Thank you. And thank you for all your travels and doing your podcast, because when you shine your light, you allow others to do that as well. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Sign up for our newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and receive a free copy of 10 Steps to Clearing Clutter Inside and Out. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. See you next Tuesday at 1pm.